On this episode of the podcast, I have with me Swarna Mani. She's the head of DevOps at DataVant. We're going to be talking about some of the challenges around the DevOps space, particularly you know, the fact that DevOps is a bit ambiguous and every company defines it slightly different and some of the challenges that go into scaling and hiring for your DevOps team. We're going to talk about how you know, the maturity of DevOps in your organization also changes the skills that are required. Uh, Swarna, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me here, Amir. Absolutely. So I guess i like to start off at the top and uh, always ask uh, for two things. One is to tell us what DataVant does as an organization and you know, as the head of DevOps, what falls on your plate? So DataVant is making you know, a lot of waves in the health data area. And uh, what we do is we are trying to bring a neutral, trusted, and uh, a platform technology which will enable a lot of you know, consumers of medical data and uh, people who have medical data to share it without having any problem about privacy of patients and you know having any HIPAA concerns because DataVant enables them to de-identify the data and share it in a secure way. So in a nutshell, that's what DataVant does. And um, as a head of DevOps here, uh, I have been tasked to you know, uh, help the infrastructure side of things and the tooling side of things so that we can have a scalable, secure infrastructure that can enable DataVant to grow faster in a secure way. Absolutely. That's awesome. Sounds pretty dynamic. I think uh, you're wearing a couple hats there and it kind of bleeds into the topic of how DevOps is and means slightly different things at different organizations. I think that becomes part of the problem. And I guess when you're looking at DevOps and maybe defining particularly what the organization's trying to do, can you maybe give us a, like a little bit more depth in terms of what that means for you at that data vamp? As you, you know, uh, very clearly mentioned, uh, DevOps is very different in each organization. In DataVan, because of the startup nature of the company and, you know, fast-growing company, uh, Charter is a little bit, you know, uh, bigger, but a little bit different as well. In many companies, DevOps is very much, you know, defined to CA, CD, or tooling. And even though it is DevOps, it's more ops function. But in DataVan, DevOps is defined in a place where, you know, we want to help the company with infrastructure, CACD tooling, security tooling, and all other places where we want to work as an enabling function rather than the ops function. So you can say that uh, we are here to solve, you know, our DevOps problems using software on various areas of infrastructure, tooling, and security. Absolutely. You mentioned, obviously, data a startup, and when you're kind of comparing Maybe you know where you guys are at now and where you're at on the you know, DevOps maturity scale. When you're looking at your team and kind of where you're trying to take it, how are you starting to examine you know everyone that's coming on? How they're going to you know, join the team, the role, the needs you have? How are you kind of you know forecasting that type of you know I guess growth for the team? One thing that I'm really happy about is like whatever DevOps decision that's been done in DataVant has been you know, done in a very matured thinking model because originally I was told that uh, the developers formed something called as DevOps Guild and they you know, pitched to the infrastructure and things like that. So we have like kind of cutting edge technologies uh, like AWS, infrastructure as a code, Terraform, Kubernetes, which are all latest. So we don't have like a lot of you know, old technologies that we need to swap or something. So our aim here is to you know enable the infrastructure and tooling to take it to the next level abstract it make it like if possible as a service so everyone can consume it without any problems so my main area of focus when i'm going to bring in new people are going to be someone who is pretty comfortable with infrastructure who is pretty comfortable with you know uh, solving problems because devops is a area where you need to have the problem solving mindset so you can go to the next level and someone who's pretty, you know, comfortable with coding, that is something you cannot find that easily in the DevOps people in the current market because a lot of people have gone into the place where a DevOps is treated as an ops function. So they are doing a lot of manual work. They may know the technologies, but they may not be that comfortable with code. So those are going to be the three areas that I'm going to concentrate, like, you know, our infrastructure familiarity, problem solving, and, you know, ease with code. If we bring in candidates like that, I'm sure that you know they can set in and with few inputs and mentorship, they can 
get to the vision where we want to go to a place where everything is scalable, secure, and easily consumable. That is going to be a very important feature, especially for a company like Dataman, which is growing fast. As you might have seen, we merged with Sayoc six months back and we acquired our Meridor like, you know, a couple of months back. So we are bringing in more and more features and companies into our ecosystem. So having an infrastructure which is easily consumable, meaning easily integratable, acting as a service is, is really uh, the way to, you know, expand the infrastructure without any problems. And um, for that, those are the three qu- qualities that I'm going to look for in a candidate. You mentioned, obviously, you know, the previously the developers have set up a DevOps guild and you came in to more mature stage versus maybe other startups. But when you were going through the interview process to you know, take the job initially, I just was curious, what were some of your thoughts when you, know, you heard that you know, they did have a developers guild, they had some you know, pieces in place? Was that comforting or was that like, hey, I need to go in there and see exactly you know, what standard that's at? Or what were your initial thoughts when you heard that? I was like, you know, actually very surprised when I came to know the technical stack for a company which was four years old. And uh, I was actually happy because uh, I worked in different, different DevOps area where I had to, you know, struggle with a lot of sunsetting the old things, bringing in the new things. And um, it was very transparent interview process with DataVant. And they did give me all the, you know, expectations and uh, what are the things that they expect the DevOps to do in future months and years to come. And what I got is what I see after I joined. So I, I did have some comms and what I, I felt was like, there are like a lot of uh, things that need to get done, but uh, the foundation is there. So it really put me at peace thinking that, you know, uh, okay, there are a few things which I need not worry about. I can really concentrate on other stuff. So yeah, it was positive for me. I would think that's a great first step to come in. And I guess when you were talking about, you know, your needs to hire, you know, I guess the one thing that I always see when we were helping companies on DevOps is the elusive software engineer that's moved into DevOps and drawing the distinction between where a backend platform begins and where the DevOps (laughs) role begins. And it's very murky. And again, goes back to when you said, you know, it's defined different things. How are you kind of, in terms of your organization, seeing the lines between like that backend platform and the DevOps team? Where does the separation exist? For us, it is kind of like currently very clear because um, all the product level things are happening in the backend and uh, whatever, as I said, like infrastructure tooling and security is happening at the DevOps end. There may come a time where, you know, there will be like, you know, we may need to sit together and discuss this, I think is better to come to DevOps. The company growth that will definitely happen. And as I said, uh, every company defines DevOps in different ways. Some companies only CACD, some company defines the whole platform ecosystem also under DevOps because it is generic, it's platform, it needs to come under DevOps. So a whole software wing will be under DevOps. Currently in DevOps, because of the way it's been structured, we have like very uh, clear definitions. And also the thing is, it's a transparent model, meaning like if a software developer wants to contribute something to infrastructure. We are totally okay with that. They do that. We review and we bring it on. So people contributing in across teams is not an uh, unfamiliar situation in Deravan. And I think, you know, uh, growing that way where we do have a charter, we take ownership, but having it like open where others can also contribute can make things easier. And that may be the model that we are going for. Interesting. And I guess, you know, you have a DevSecOps background and you mentioned, obviously, you're responsible for everything for DevOps. I guess at what point does DevSecOps pop up on the maturity, you know, scale for data event? I would say in some ways it's already has been, you know, getting into data van because the data van is working towards FedRAMP and uh, the main base for FedRAMP is bringing in all the security tooling into various parts of infrastructure. DevSecOps is in a very short term, if you want to defend DevSecOps, it is just moving security to left, meaning like baking all the security model into CSLD tooling. And even though in data when we call it DevOps, when uh, we brought in various tools to you know move towards FedRAMP audit, we have started adapting DevSecOps. So we are already you know there in the first phase. So I think once we get Fedra approved or something, we can say that DevSecOps is baked into the DevOps of DataVent. Yeah. You ever envision, I guess, as you guys go through the process and, and you're seeing the other pieces mature, 
Is security going to stay potentially under your purview? Do you envision it being its own standalone area? I know you have a DevSecOps background. I guess I was just kind of curious. Uh, no, we have like a, already a matured a security team, even though it's a small team, it's a mighty team. And we got a new head of security, Ben Wah, who's doing a phenomenal work here. Nice. And uh, our future is going to be very much a close engagement partnership where they will derive the requirements and we will be the implementers and uh, strong supporters of security and of holding the fort for them. Cool. I mean, it sounds like, yeah, it's you're going to still maintain some of that DevSecOps and partnership with them. And going back to the ambiguity that exists in DevOps, DevSecOps, I mean, we're not going to talk about SRE, but when you're looking at your team and as you're kind of building out your capabilities, you're going to support in a partnership with the security teams and the DevSecOps components. How does the team, I guess, keep specializing? I guess, do you envision like as you're building out your team that you're going to get more specialists or people are just going to handle, you know, various components based on you know, broader skill sets? Or how will you handle, you know, the specialization that probably comes with maturity? I at least find that in this area, in this particular area, uh, first and foremost, you need to be a generalist. And then you can be a specialist in certain areas uh, that really helps the team, but you need to be a generalist because uh, every input counts when there is an ha- all hands on deck situation. And also what happens is unlike development, uh, I come from a development background. I was a developer for 15 plus years and then I moved to DevOps. The one thing is like, if you are a very good academic candidate and you are very good has software skills and design skills, you can be a good startup developer and you can go from there. For DevOps, there are a lot of things which are learned on the field and you need to have the ability to connect the dots and to have that kind of uh, knowledge, you need to be a generalist because if you are not a generalist, you cannot connect the dots. You can be a specialist, but you still need that thing. And uh, I think the team by itself becomes solid only if everybody can pitch in if there is some kind of issue and they can contribute their viewpoint. So I I will really, really, uh, you know, encourage my team to be first and foremost, a generalist and then go for specialization in whichever area they want. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I mean, I guess it's interesting in terms of allowing you know people to kind of migrate or you know gravitate towards areas that they like more. I guess when it comes to you know your views on maybe that next step, let's say you're hiring people and they're just interested in specific areas, you know, typically in terms of like growth and mentorship, how do you envision helping them? Is it hey, let's uh, get you some you know, small projects to work on, go get some education and training. How do you, would you help, I guess, to kind of ramp people up into the areas they might want to move into? Definitely one thing is if they are going into the DevOps area, they need to have some basic skills. You cannot have everything in DevOps because DevOps is growing like crazy every day and it is just not possible at any point of time. So the basic thing in at least knowing one kind of cloud infrastructure, doesn't matter who the provider is, AWS or GCP or whatever it is, have some knowledge of one cloud provider and uh, some infrastructure as a code and uh, some Dockerized model like Kubernetes is going to be the base that anyone expects. And uh, let's say that we have like a new grad who is going to join, who needs to learn DevOps on the field. I would really suggest them to take few trainings to begin with the bootstrap so they get these basic stuff. And um, I usually don't, you know, encourage to give separate project to, you know, work on the side. We try to do something called as an interrupt model where I have one of the engineer go through the rotation where they, you know, handle all the queries, requests, tickets, all those things, because um, we are do, we want to do true DevOps where we have development and implementation and also some ops. And this interrupt model kind of gives time for every engineer to have a dedicated time to do that interrupt. And so that the rest of the time of the sprint, they'll be doing only the story work, uninterrupted implementing and designing. So when a new engineer comes, what I do is like, I try to put them on interrupt continuously for like a sprint or two sprints so that they get to know what is the process. They may need to continuously work with other engineers, but they try to learn the ecosystem. And when they are doing that, have like constant check-ins and see what are all the areas of gaps and have them do some trainings in the parallel so that they can connect both. Because what happens is that there are like a lot of uh, theory in DevOps out there, which looks pretty clear when you hear about it. But when you go hands-on into it, it is extremely like uh, different because the way it is explained in theory and the way it is done 
hands on is a different. So doing it in parallel would be the easiest way for the person to get onboarded. And after that, they can just, you know, adapt based on what are the various projects and they do. So instead of isolating them, putting them in the mainstream and asking uh, them to work with other engineers and collaborate and, you know, uh, ramp up and whatever gaps, as they asking them to do like simple training and other things on the side so that they can connect the dots easily would be the model that I would have. Interesting. I mean, it sounds like it's uh, it definitely, you know, helping somebody assimilate and then kind of gaining, you know, their initial velocity to ramp up would make sense down that path. And I guess as people are, you know, in the future specializing, you know, you're obviously trying to balance people's workload and making sure the right person's working in the right area. How do you start managing your team to make sure, you know, you have the right person doing the right thing? When you have like a very small team, it's pretty easy. You know, like who, what are each one's strength and things like that. But as I said, uh, we also want to have generalists and uh, specialists are encouraged. The easiest way that I have found to do is, you know, uh, have like a transparent model with the team, explain to them what are the projects that are coming and uh, create like a brainstorming session and see like who can bring in more input. And that doesn't mean that there may be someone who wants to learn that area, who may not be specialized in that area, but they want to ramp up. And uh, that kind of sessions, you know, the project planning sessions or, you know, scoping sessions really help a person in my role to understand who can bring in more value or just write the scope and ask the team to review. And you can understand from the review comments itself, like who can be the valuable front runner for this project and who can be the support cast and things like that. And just gauge from there. And then, of course, you know, discuss with the team also who are like, you know, you feel and um, make sure that they are comfortable because just because someone is super specialized in that area doesn't mean that they want to do that project. They may want to be a supporting cast and they want someone else to do it. That's how I usually do it by you know, doing the project planning or scoping session or design discussion session and bringing the brainstorming where, you know, everybody is able to pitch their ideas and then gauge based on the project, like who would be the people who would really not only contribute to the project, but can take it to the end goal. Awesome. Now, I mean, it sounds like you know, obviously you walked into a pretty good situation. I mean, the security side is coming together. You know, you obviously are at a good starting point because I know you came from a large organization. Obviously, sometimes, you know, when people go from a big company to a small company, they feel like there's a lot more to do just because there's less there. But it seems like you walked into a pretty darn good situation. Yeah, I, I really lucked out. And uh, the one thing I have to say is uh, the hiring model is awesome in data. And they try to get people who are smart, nice, and who get things done. And whomever I have met till now, they really meet those criteria. So that is what you know I think is the biggest charm of data. And uh, having like a lean but high performing team. I guess one question when you're I guess yeah, you you obviously are assessing for different skills, and obviously you, you're looking for people who are, you know, like you mentioned, generalists that are good problem solvers. What happens when somebody comes to the table with, let's say, you know, skills that are not quite as readily apparent, right? Like they're a software engineer that's done some, you know, platform work. They've touched the DevOps and they want to move into DevOps, and all of a sudden they're coming in with a little bit less, maybe you know, overall infrastructure. Is that someone that you're like, hey, I'm I'm willing to take the time to ramp them up? Is that a skill set that you put a premium on on the software engineering side? I know you had a developer background. How do you view maybe you know someone with that type of background when they're trying to get into DevOps? We actually totally embrace those kind of people, and we did speak to few candidates like that. Our interview process is, uh, I wouldn't say it's tool agnostic. It's very very uh, generic, meaning like we first try to see how comfortable they are with code by not asking them to write the code, but, you know, having a collaborative session with our engineer, you know, looking at a code and discussing about that. The next session is system design, which is again generic. And the third thing is, again, another technical session is more about them talking what they have done, problem solving and stuff like that. So if you see our interview process is very much about measuring how good they are at problem solving, how good they are at collaboration. And we also have equal amount of behavioral sessions with various head of departments to see how they fit into our culture. So I would say that the kind of candidate that you just described will be totally uh, into our interview process and they can get through the interview process. And uh, I want someone who is passionate, good at problem solving and uh, ready to learn new skills. If that is the person who is applying and 
gets through our interview uh, i'll be happy and glad to you know mentor that person and take them to the next level awesome yeah i mean your software you know your software engineering background i'm sure helps you've been through that journey so i'm sure that helps you when you're finding someone who's looking to start that path and i think there is a premium put on devops people that have a software engineering background so i think that's a probably good good place for a lot of people yeah awesome I know uh, you're busy, so I appreciate your time being on the podcast. And if somebody does want to reach out to you, you know, if somebody is interested in data, data vent or has any questions about, you know, so the ambiguity around defining DevOps in different companies and the maturity stage, is, is LinkedIn a good place to get a hold yeah, of you? I'm pretty active in LinkedIn. Feel free to connect to me. I'll be happy to answer the questions. Okay, cool. We'll make sure that's included in the show notes. And again, thank you for being on. And that's it for this episode. We'll be back again, different guests, different topic. Until then, I always ask for two things. One, share the podcast if it's uh, something that's been useful to you. And secondly, if you want me to talk about a specific topic, feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn. I'll do my best to find a guest. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you. 